Today is all about asking the experts about hosting, migrating, and managing your websites with AWS, which is Amazon Web Service. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm honored to be the webinar producer here today. And uh, um, before I introduce the speakers, I'm going to show you how you can engage someone is already familiar. They've already turned on the closed caption. If you do need the closed caption, hit the CC button in your Zoom section and you'll be able to use the closed caption. We are recording this. The recording with the slides are gonna be sent to you within 48 hours, probably tomorrow. So check your inbox for that. Our guest speakers here today, our guest experts, I'm not gonna say just speakers, our expert here today is Angela Sai, And we have Kanal Jindal. They are gonna give you an, all the questions and answers about AWS. So I'm gonna turn this over to Angela. Welcome everybody and have a great webinar. Thank you, Aretha, for that introduction. Um, let me go ahead and share right there. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Angela Sai, and I am a solutions architect here at AWS. And I'm really excited to be here today to talk to you all about AWS and hosting website with AWS. And so for the agenda for today, we are going to start by talking about who is AWS and what exactly is co cloud computing. I saw in the chat that we have um, a couple of people who are here to learn more about cloud and you're not currently in AWS yet. So no worries, that's what I'm here for today to tell you a little bit more about what we do. Then we'll dive into why a website? Why are we honing in on the topic of website today? And how does that matter for your organization? And how can you innovate your website with AWS? I will also show you a demo of how you can easily host your website with AWS. And we will leave some time at the end for a Q&A session. So who is AWS? Well, we were founded over 15 years ago and we started as amazon.com. So after years of operating the online shopping platform, we realized that we got very good at one thing and that is operating IT technology at a massive scale for millions of customers. So we thought, well, why don't we take this technology that we've developed, that the knowledge that we've um, learned from operating this online platform and pass that along to other organizations such as yourself. And actually some of our earliest customers are nonprofit customers. Um, some of the ones you might've heard of are Red Cross, uh, Code.org, PBS, and they are still customers of AWS today and they continue to innovate their organizations with AWS. And we also have dedicated teams that help nonprofit organizations like you. So just now I mentioned that I am a solutions architect. So what that means is I am a technical guidance for my nonprofit customers as they navigate through their cloud journey, because cloud can be sort of intimidating and daunting, especially if you haven't done it before. And that's what me and my colleague solutions architects are here for to help you. And we are a free resource to you. And my team is actually dedicated specifically to nonprofit customers. Um, and later we'll also showcase uh, more resources that we have specifically for our nonprofit customers like you to help you get started. So now we talked about AWS, but what is cloud computing? So cloud computing, the punchline is, it is the on-demand delivery of IT resources via the internet with a pay-as-you-go model. So, okay, well, why does that matter? Well, you're probably here today because you heard about cloud, um, either from word of mouth, other organizations are doing it and you want to consider this for your organization, or maybe what you're currently using today, whether it is traditional infrastructure or some alternative solution that you have and you want it to be better. And many of the customers that I have worked with are in similar positions. What I've heard from them is, and I'm sure you're familiar with, is with traditional infrastructure, the equipment piece can sometimes be challenging to handle. So for example, you have to pay a some uh, upfront fee, right? To pay for the servers, to pay for the space to put the servers, cooling and man maintaining it. 
And on top of that, you have to assign people to maintain those servers, watch those servers and making sure that everything is going well. And when things aren't going well, you have to send people to troubleshoot for those physical servers. And that's taking time away from your team that they can be spending um, innovating and exploring new ideas for your business. And on top of that, with traditional infrastructure, a lot of times, there are contracts that you have to sign or licensings that you have to adhere to. And oftentimes that leads to overpaying for resources that you're not really using. And with the cloud, that all changes. So at AWS, we operate on a utility model. So what that means is similar to the utilities of your house, you pay for just the amount of electricity that you're consuming or just the um, amount of water that you've used for your house. And that's how cloud computing works. You're only paying for the resources that you've consumed and you don't have to um, over provision. And with the clouds, you have the agility, the capability to innovate fast. We have all sorts of IT resources, just a click of a button away for you from databases to machine learning to um, data analytics to servers, storage, anything you can think of. It is now one click away to you so that your team can quickly innovate. Try it out and experiment. If it doesn't work, no worries. There was no contract. You just turn it off and you're no longer paying for it. And now you know it doesn't work, right? So that ability to innovate fast and try out new things is invaluable for organizations. And also with the cloud, um, similar idea. You have that scal scalability. Right. So you can quickly provision new servers, additional servers, if you have an influx of users. Maybe you're hosting some sort of special event and you need more servers than you typically need. Right. Or maybe you are testing out a separate environment. Um, and once you're done, you can quickly scale back down so you're not over uh, overpaying for the resources that you're not using for most part of the year. And now um, this will also um, give your developers or your IT team time back to do things that they would rather be doing for your organizations um, rather than maintaining those servers. So those are the kind of typical challenges that I hear from our customers that I'm sure uh, resonate with you as well. But why websites, right? Why are we here to talk about websites today? Why do you need a fast, reliable website? And how does that have anything to do with your donor or spreading your organization's mission? Well, as I'm sure you all are aware, we're all aware, technology has really changed how we communicate, especially within the last few years. Everyone is online all the time now. And so let's say someone hears about your organization, whether it is through the word of mouth or maybe they attended an event um, and saw your table, or maybe they saw one of your flyers or your posts on social media, and they're intrigued in your organization and your mission now. What is probably the first thing they're going to do to learn more about you? They're, they're probably going to go to your website, right? They're going to research you. They're going to search online for your information, look at your website. Are you a legitimate organization? What are your missions? What areas do you serve? Um, what are some things or projects that your organizations may have accomplished before that they're interested in? And if they're interested in helping out, right? How do they volunteer? How do they sign up to volunteer? How do they donate their money? If you don't have a website for them to look at, a lot of times that will lead to loss and confidence in your organization. And it's not just the lack of website that will potentially lead to loss in confidence, right? It's also having a slow website. So someone at some point told me we're now at a time where we are impatient even standing in front of a microwave. And that's true. We live in such a fast paced world, world that we don't like waiting. So if somebody goes to your website and your website takes five to 10 seconds to load, Sure, five to 10 seconds sounds really short for us, but for somebody who's waiting for the website to load, they may think something is wrong with your website or that your website is not working, right? So most likely what they're going to do is they're going to refresh a couple of times. If it still doesn't load, they'll probably close the website or move on or go do something else, right? Because I know I'm guilty of being impatient of waiting on websites. Your website is in a way, the modern day first impression, and we want to make sure we give the good first impression to your audience. 
And on top of that, there's a lot of virtual events now, especially um, ever since COVID, right? Um, a lot of the marketing is done uh, virtually, your event advertisement, those are all done virtually. So if you're hosting a special event, um, whether it's fundraising or maybe it's an awareness month related to your mission, um, or maybe it is the giving season in November and now you have an influx of um, users who are coming to your website, you need a site that is able to handle that increased volume of users um, without having to pay for the additional resources throughout the year and incur additional operation cost. So what I wanna share with you now is two of our customers who face those exact same problems um, and they innovated with AWS. They came to AWS, found a solution with AWS, and I wanna share um, their story with you. So first one is Code.org. So Code.org is a organization that provides free K through 12 um, computer science curriculums through their website. And every year they have a special event called the Hour of Code, where they have millions of students who flood to their website to participate in this event and to participate in the activities. So as you can imagine, this creates a huge influx of traffic that they're not normally used to outside of the other 51 weeks of the year. So that was the challenge that they have and they came to AWS. And the solution that they found was they utilized a feature that we have called auto scaling. And so just like its name, auto scaling means that you can automatically scale your number of servers based on your demand. There is a high number of demand, the server count, the uh, compute capacity automatically goes up. When it's no longer needed, it automatically scales back down so that you are saving money. And so with that feature, by implementing that in their website, Code.org was able to successfully host this event, this hour code event for their students across the globe. And on top of that, because it's able to scale back down and they don't have to have the extra resources sitting there all year, they were able to save $1.3 million in terms of operation costs. The other customer story I want to share with you is the Orange County United Way. So United Way is a global organization where they have local programs that help the communities in terms of healthcare, um, education and economic mobility. And the challenge that they ran into is during COVID-19, they established a new program um, for homelessness prevention to help those who are at risk of homelessness. And as I'm sure most of us remember, COVID-19 came very quickly and the situation escalated very quickly, leaving very little time to prepare or plan. And so United Way for this homeless prevention program for the application process, they decided it at first to funnel it through their existing call center. But what they quickly realized was that this was not working. They were getting a large number of calls and it was creating long queue wait times for their call centers. So they realized they needed a new solution and they reached out to their AWS team. And so the solution that they ended up going with is utilizing a um, web, hosting service that we have called AWS Amplify. And basically with Amplify, they were able to create a web application as well as a mobile application. And they were able to do all of this within the uh, within three weeks. And so with Amplify, they um, alleviated the call time from the call center because now all the applications are going through the website instead. And on top of that, because Amplify supports both um, computer web application development, as well as mobile development, it allowed them to reach more audience because a lot of the audience and members that they serve don't necessarily own a computer laptop on top of the cell phone, but Amplify allowed them to do both and reach both types of audiences. And so with this application's launch, they were able to distribute um, over $2.6 million in aid and helping over 5,000 families. And again, they were able to do all of this website just within three weeks. So, so far, we talked about the typical challenges that drive people to choose the cloud, some of which probably are the reasons that you're exploring the idea of cloud. Then we talk about why website, why is that important for your organization? 
And I shared with you two of my uh, two of our customers' journey on how they were able to innovate with AWS, one highlighting the scalability and the other highlighting how quickly you can get that going. And so now I want to shift the gear to talk about how you and your organization can launch your web application with AWS. So you're here for web hosting, so you're likely looking for one of these three things. You may be looking for a static website where you're simply hosting um, content, information about your organization where you just have simple HTML pages. Or maybe you are looking to host a more dynamic website where you have backend codes that you would like to manage. If that's the case, uh, maybe you're looking for a virtual server um, where you still have control over your full environment, but you don't have to have the physical server there anymore. You hand that off to AWS. Or maybe you're looking to have a more uh, managed application where you're still having a server, but you want AWS to take care of the more managing day-to-day -day tasks like OS patching, backup, things like that. If you are someone who's more in the first category, looking for a static website, then AWS Amplify would be a good option for you. So Amplify is the um, service that I mentioned just now that Orange County United Way uses. And so, like I mentioned, it supports both web and mobile application development. On top of that, it integrates with a lot of other tools to allow you to do continuous development pipeline, um, or if you need authentication, right? If you want your website to be username and password protected, it has tools that you can integrate with that easily. Um, or maybe it is you have um, a global audience, right? You're, you have users who are in different countries outside of where you're based. Um, you, you can integrate it with a global content delivery network so that your users, no matter where they are, have the same great experience. If you're somebody who uh, was in the other categories where you're looking to have a virtual server uh, for your application or your website, the easiest way to get started is Amazon LightSail. Um, LightSail allows you to spin up a virtual server um, just within a click, and that's something that we will demo in a second here. Um, and it can do outside of uh, web hosting, it can also do other application hosting as well. And the last one is if you're someone who wants a more robust environment, you want auto scaling capabilities, and you want AWS to manage a lot of the day-to-day -day, um, heavy lifting, the management task like uh, the backup I mentioned, then Beanstalk can be a good option for you. So Beanstalk will help you set up an environment and provide you the monitoring tools that you need to see how your uh, environment is performing. It will also do auto scaling so that you can accommodate for demand um, different times of the year. It can be highly available and provide low balancing for your servers all within a few clicks. Now, one of the most common questions that I get um, through my time working with nonprofit customers is how do I host a WordPress website on AWS? And WordPress is popular among nonprofit organizations because it's a very easy way to have a very nice looking website, especially for organizations that may not uh, want to hire a full-time developer, web developer on staff, right? It's a very easy way to get a website going. And so for the rest of the time that we have here, I'm going to focus on WordPress specifically. So for WordPress, the easiest way to get started would be through Amazon LightSail. It is ideal for your simple workloads. It is a very quick deployment, and it is a great choice if this is your first time getting started on AWS. Basically, it's a great way for you to dip your toe in the water. And the nice thing about LightSail is that it has its own um, platform outside of the AWS console, which is another reason why it's great for people first time starting because you have everything that you need from the server to the load balancer to storage, um, all within the light cell platform without having all the other um, services that we provide that can be a little bit daunting the first time you look at it. And finally, it is also very cost effective. So light cell pricing is based on a monthly model and the monthly plan starts as low as $3.50 per month. 
And we also offer a free tier where you can try out the first three months for free for some of the plants that we offer. So last thing before we go into the demo, and I just want to tell you a little bit more about light sales is um, while we've been focusing on websites, uh, light cell, its simplicity and affordability is also a great choice for a lot of other use cases. So for light cell, you can launch a server with just the operating system install, whether that is Linux or Windows. And then on top of this basic virtual server, you can then run your software on top of it. So maybe you have a accounting software that your organization is using, or maybe it is a donor uh, management software that you're using. You can run that on top of either a Linux or Windows server with LightSail. Um, or you can run a um, server that comes with the application pre-installed. And because it's pre-installed, when you launch it, the WordPress or Drupal application will already be working. And the last part is you can also use it to host your development stack. If you have a LAMP stack or Node.js for your web application, that's also something that LightSail can do. So with all of that, I figured the best way to show you the capability of LightSail and how um, effective web hosting is with AWS is to go ahead and show you. So let me go ahead and switch to the AWS console here. All right, give me just one second while I re-log in here. All righty. Let me go ahead and do that. Okay. So here we are at the AWS console. Um, if you are someone who already uses AWS or have explored, um, this probably looks familiar to you. If you're new, no worries. Um, this is the AWS console. And what you can do is on the top here, we have a search bar where you can easily search for whichever service that you want to go to. And um, let's go ahead and type in light sale. So you'll notice when I click on light sale, it takes me to a completely different screen. Again, if you're somebody who already uses AWS, you'll notice this looks very different from the AWS console. And that is because it is abstracting away a lot of those many services you can use to give you a simpler UI for someone who's just starting so that you're not overwhelmed by the number of things that can be going on. So, um, here's the live sell homepage. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you um, how quickly it is to get a WordPress website start. So I'm going to click on this create instance button here on the right here. When you come to this configuration page, one of the first things you will get asked is where do you want the server? So we have regions in throughout the US and different parts of the US and as well as uh, regions across the globe. So this is good if you have a global audience or if your organization is based here in the US, um, but your clientele is somewhere outside of the US and you want to make sure that they have a smooth experience, um, you can launch um, a server in, in the region closest to your user. So I'm going to keep it as uh, Oregon for now since that's the one closest to me. Then coming down here, the next question you'll get asked is what type of server do you want? As we'll see here, we have Linux versus Windows. For both of these, you can do just the operating system. So you have different versions of your Windows. And again, like I mentioned, the use case here can be you have your own uh, commercial software or open source, open source software that you want to run on top of these um, servers. And that's something you can do. And for Linux, we have different distributions that you can pick from. If you want to have a server that's come on top of the application, then here are some of the applications that are available to you. Um, we're going to pick WordPress, and that's the one I'm going to be demoing for you today. So coming down here, we have uh, two optional things you can configure. One of them is a launch script. And so basically, if you have some sort of uh, scripts that you would like to run at the launch of the server, this is where you can input that. So maybe you have a, a storage that you want to make sure it connects to a database whatsoever. Um, you can enter that here. 
And if you are someone who does development work on your local machine, um, with this part, SH key, you can either upload your own key or create a new key to download so that you can use that um, on your machine to connect to the server. If you're someone who is not familiar with SSH and you're going, okay, well, I, I don't really quite understand this, no worries, because LightCell also provides a way for you to connect to your servers through command line without you really needing to know what is SSH. And I will show you that to you as well. The next thing I want to highlight is the capability to do automatic snapshots. So having a website is really important, but having a backup of it is also extremely important in case something were to happen. Traditionally, on-premises, you might have to do that as a manual process, but with LightSail, you have the capability to set up automatic snapshots, and you can set it to a certain time of the day that you would like LightSail to automatically create that snapshot for you so you don't have to worry about backing up your uh, web servers. Then the next thing coming down here, we have the different monthly plans that I was talking about. So we start at $3.50 and you have different plans you can pick from. And the difference is in how performant is the server going to be. And you can see the configuration of the servers down here at the bottom. And you can also sort these different monthly plans based on different metrics. And as you'll see, these first three ones here, um, we offer it to you for free for the first three months, which allows you to easily try it out if you would like. So I'm going to stick with the $3.50 because that's all I need for the demo today. The last thing you will need is name your instance. So I'm going to call this our TechSoup demo. And here is where you can specify how many instances you would like to launch today. So I'm going to go ahead and do two so that we can have a highly available website that in case one of them fails, I can um, switch to the other one and my users don't have to experience any downtime. So I'm going to create instance. So while those two, while the um, servers are getting ready, I want to point out a couple of things to you. So with LightCell, we have extensive documentation that is there to support you. So if after I click through everything, you're like, oh no, I already forgot what was the first thing that she did. Don't worry, we have documentations on that. There's also a search bar up here that allows you to search through. So if I say, how do I launch WordPress? Um, it will take me to the documentation down here. We have a quick start guide, a tutorial, uh, and you have all these resources available to you. So coming back to the screen that we were at, you'll notice it is no longer grayed out because our instances are ready. And that is how quickly you can get a server running with LightSail. Um, and it's, it's incredible. So let's go ahead and click on this first server to see what are some of the things that we can see here. So I see the name of my server. I see the configuration that I have. And I see where is the server located. On top of that, I also see the public IP address. So just to prove to you that this is running, let's go ahead and take that public IP address and put it over here and look at our WordPress website. It looks like it's still configuring. So let's give it a, just a, a couple more seconds. Um, and let me show you a couple more things before we go back to it. So here we have multiple tabs that you can um, look at for your website. One of the coolest thing and nicest thing about LightSail is the metrics. So you have metrics that can allow you to monitor your server. Um, and all of this come pre-configured with the LightSail instance and not just the CPU. So if I expand this, you have status checked. Um, has your website been giving errors? Um, how's your server doing in terms of CPU, networking, et cetera? So all of this um, come ready for you and you don't have to configure anything. The next thing is snapshots. So we already talked about that. You can do automatic snapshots, or if you want to take a manual snapshot, you can do that from here as well. So another nice thing about snapshots besides backup is let's say today you realize, okay, based on the metrics, I feel like this instance size is too big. I want to downgrade it to a cheaper plan. Um, I no longer need this large of an instance. You can take a snapshot, 
turn off your old instance and use that snapshot to spin up a new instance. And it's as simple as that. Next, we have storage. You have a storage that comes pre-attached for your server, or you can attach additional disks if you would like. And then finally, we have a networking. So we have the public IP address that we assign to you. Um, and then as well as a firewall that comes pre-configured and you can easily add rules uh, for your website to protect it. So now let's come back to this public IP and give it a refresh. It should be good now. There we go. So now we have this uh, WordPress website, although boring, there's nothing to look at, but it's running now. So um, let me show you one more thing. So coming back to the light cell side, I'm going to go back to the tab of connect and I'm going to um, connect to my server. And the reason why I want to do that is since the WordPress application comes pre-installed with the light cell, the password of this specific WordPress site is also stored inside the light cell machine. And so you can retrieve that by connecting to the um, light cell instance. And earlier I mentioned, it's okay that you don't know what SSH means, because if you go ahead and click on this connect using SSH, it takes care of all the keys and stuff for you in the back end. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and look at the files I have on here. And right here, this Bitnami application passcode, password file is what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that. And again, if you're like, oh no, this is going really fast. I can't take notes fast enough. Don't worry, we have prescriptive guidance tutorials for all of these. So I'm going to copy that password and take that password. And now what I'm going to do is come back to my block and I'm going to go to the admin page for it. And I'm going to log in with the password I just retrieved. And voila, here is my website or WordPress admin site. If you're someone who already use a Word, uses WordPress, this is probably a very familiar screen to you. This is where you can set the title of your page. This is where you can add new pages, add a donation page, edit your pages, things like that. And so this is just like your everyday typical WordPress website. And now you have that on AWS. So the last thing I will show you here is um, the highly available capability. So I'm gonna come to you on the left here, networking. So on the networking side, you'll notice we have two options, creating a load balancer or creating a distribution. Load balancer allows you to have a single entry point uh, for your servers and you can have two, three, four, five servers behind it. And what it does is if one of those server fails, it will redirect the traffic to the servers that are working. And so your users won't experience any downtime. Um, and this is great for to provide a highly available um, application for your organization. The other one is a distribution. So this is a global distribution, meaning that if you launch your server in US, but you also have users in Asia, you could spin up another server in Asia, or you can take advantage of the global distribution and cache some of the content closer to your users so that they have the same great experience no matter where they are. Um, and then the last thing is domain name. So if you're someone who has existing domain name, don't worry, you can bring that and create a domain name with light sale so that your servers can inherit your organization's domain name. Or if you're someone who doesn't have a website yet and don't have a domain name, don't worry, you can also register that with light sale. So again, this is a great way to get started because you literally have everything that you need to get your website working all within this console. So with that um, is my concludes my demo for LightSail. And I am going to pass it over to my colleague Kunal, who will now be sharing with you about how some of the other resources that we may have to help nonprofit organizations get started um, on top of what I've already mentioned. Thank you, Angela. Uh... Hi everyone, my name is Kunal Jindal. I'm a principal product manager with the AWS for uh, nonprofits team. Uh, my colleague Angela shared one particular use case around launching a website. I actually want to focus on a couple of more things. First, similar to building websites, uh, I will share the other needs that nonprofit customers have told us about. 
And second, share solutions that we at AWS have built specifically for nonprofits to address the needs that we have heard. For this call, I'm actually going to share one of our uh, AWS web properties called the Solutions Library. Uh, Angela, if you can stop sharing the screen. Thank you. So I'm starting to share my screen. So this is the page for Solutions Library, the resource that I was talking about. As you may have guessed, Solutions Library is a repository for uh, sharing solutions and architectural guidance to solve industry-specific challenges. And I'm really excited to share with you that we have a nonprofit-specific solution library uh, page here. Uh, the needs that we have heard about from nonprofits range rather broadly. I will quickly walk you through a few of these. Uh, what Angela was talking about is one of the needs around uh, website application and e-commerce scaling, which uh, as you can see is a part of our cloud fundamentals uh, solution area. So the needs that you see here are solution areas such as cloud fundamentals and within them various use cases or needs that we have heard. So solution area essentially is a group of related needs and within cloud fundamentals, some of the other needs that we have heard about from nonprofits include how to set up a personalized contact center for donors and members and visualizing donor data. Similarly, one of the other uh, solution areas is IT optimization, where backup and disaster recovery of mission critical data, optimizing cost, security, migration and modernization are some of the common needs that we have heard about from nonprofits. Uh, walking you through the rest of the needs. Uh, another common solution area is donor, member, and volunteer insights. Within this, data unification uh, use case is focused on need to be able to unify and draw insights from valuable donor data, which is currently sitting in disparate tools. Another uh, need here is uh, personalizing communication with donors. Moving on to donor experiences. This is where we have a need around digital fundraising. For example, what to solicit from which donor at what frequency. And now we demonstrate uh, how nonprofits can actually use AWS solutions and services to address these needs that we talked about. I will go over three examples at a broad level. I'm going to flip to next uh, page, which uh, is an architecture for donor member data analytics on AWS. This architecture shows the steps. Here are the steps. The steps that uh, nonprofits can take to ingest data from disparate sources into AWS, clean and normalize the data, and then drive modern interactive dashboards. On this topic of ingesting data, we have recently launched a connector, a data connector for uh, Blackboard specifically the Razor's Edge NXT tool, which is a very popular tool amongst nonprofits uh, used as a CRM, Customer Relationship Management Tool. Uh, this is a specific uh, uh, technology called Afflow, which is a service within AWS, which makes it pretty easy to be able to ingest data within a few clicks from tools like uh, Blackboard Razor's Edge NXT and many others to uh, data warehouses in AWS and this data transfer can be at preferred frequency, either on demand or on schedule. I do want to point out here that uh, the specific data connector, while I was talking about one particular connector, we have uh, a number of other connectors for tools which are used most frequently by nonprofits. Some examples include Salesforce, Google Sheets, Microsoft Dynamics 365, Marketo, HubSpot, and PayPal. Back to the topic of uh, architectural solutions. So here is another example of how uh, campaign administrators in nonprofits can automate the donation solicitation process from donors at a defined frequency. And again, this leverages our AI ML, artificial intelligence and machine learning capabilities, as well as omni-channel contact center capabilities. 
So the services that are commensurate to AI ML as well as omni-channel contact center are used in this specific uh, solution to be able to solicit uh, donation from donors at a defined frequency. The last solution that I'm going to talk about is uh, about predictive scores for member retention on AWS. This architecture details are the steps that nonprofits can take to understand which members are uh, likely to allow their membership to lapse and the reasons for the same. Uh, I know this was a high level overview. Uh, the intent here is to show that there's a lot of possibilities with AWS, not just around websites and solutions library is one of the many resources that you have at disposal to be able to uh, gauge what's possible with AWS. So with that, I'm actually going to stop uh, sharing my screen. Uh, Angela, can you share the presentation back again, please? Yes, can you move to the next slide? Yes, one final call out from my side. Uh, there's a number of other great resources available for you outside of the solutions library that I was just talking about. These include the credit program, which is specific to nonprofits. Uh, AWS has amazing partners who have uh, solutions to many of your needs already. AWS marketplace for nonprofits, where you can actually procure many of these offerings from partners. Imagine Grant, again, uh, something exclusive to nonprofits. Also our uh, AWS's uh, annual Imagine Nonprofit Conference. And lastly, uh, the Powering Purpose in the Cloud Guide. Uh, you see a QR code here. So the call to action is please scan the QR code to be able to access this specific uh, guide. We'd also love feedback on what resonates amongst these uh, use cases that I was showing and what's missing. And with that, uh, I'm opening it up uh, to the group for any questions to Angela or uh, myself. Hey, there's a question from Kay Smith. Does AWS have a solution similar to Azure files? Yeah, I can take that one. So um, I am not familiar with Azure files um, since I am more of an AWS um, expert, but some of the file sharing solutions that we have are we have um, ones where you can have the file share where everyone can download the um, driver on their local laptop, right? And then that file share is living inside the cloud, but it will appear as if it's a local drive for your users who are using the their laptops, right? We also have solutions, which is very similar to your traditional Windows, Windows file share. We have a managed solution for that. It works just like what you have today if that's what you're using a Windows uh, file share. And we have um, other ones. Um, if you are using an SFTP uh, file server, if that's what you're referring to, and much more, right? And so we have many different file share solutions. If that is something that you are interested in, um, definitely reach out to us and submit the contact us form. And uh, one of the solutions architect will be able to meet with you, better understand you know, what, where do you need to share it to and point you to the right solution. Awesome. Um, another question is, does AWS offer grants for nonprofits to get started with hosting the website? I'd be happy to take that question. So as some of you may know, AWS does offer up to $5,000 in credits on AWS annually. So that's something that you could actually build into your budgeting cycle. It renews every July of the fiscal year. So that is certainly accessible to you today, right now to get started hosting your website and doing some of the things that the brilliant Angela has walked us through today. Additionally, we have a formal grant program called the AWS Imagine Grant. I'll drop the link in the chat. And that's for nonprofits that are ready to take the next step to start doing maybe other data projects, do a migration, et cetera. So we do have funding opportunities available. And then also just through creating a relationship with us, I will say, um, and I see a question in the chat, what's the annual cost for a small nonprofit? Maybe Angela, you can walk people through how to go about estimating that because we know that cost is really important and you guys wanna know, but it's very, very affordable. So we can walk you through how to understand what those costs might be. There's all nonprofits are different, 
Um, but yes, it's it's very affordable. Um, Angela, do you want to walk through the cost calculator and maybe how that, not a screen share, but maybe how a nonprofit would go about understanding costs for a website? Yeah, so for the website, um, like Alarka mentioned, it varies um, depending on what you need, what your traffic is like. Like you saw with the light sale, right? We have a predictable rate each month, um, but then it depends on what level or what size of the server performance that you need. Um, but that's true for all of our services is that we have a set rate and you can um, expect the cost to be um, what you, um, it's better to be, right, depending on your usage. And we also have a pricing calculator. If you Google AWS pricing calculator, it will come up. And through that website, you can go to all of our services. And within each service, it'll give you fields and show you what is being taken into consideration when you get your bill, right? So for example, is it how long your server is running or is it how much you're storing within your file system? And so once you enter all of that in, it will give you an estimate as to how much it's going to cost. Now, I know that can probably sound like a lot because, well, if we're just starting, how do I know, you know, what services do I need to put in there and how do I know how much usage I'm going to need? And that's part of my job um, working with nonprofit customer is um, I help them build out an architecture that we say, okay, this is what you need. Um, and then we walk through the pricing calculator together. You tell me what you expect your usage to be like. We put that in and then we talk about what is expected in terms of the cost together so that there are no surprises to you. Awesome. Here's another question. Could you explain the AWS Activate program and is it available to nonprofits? So actually the AWS Activate program, if I'm thinking of the one you're mentioning is for startups. So those would be for startup organizations that are uh, for profits that are kind of working with a venture capital fund or another equity fund. So Activate would likely not be for nonprofit organizations, but we do, I dropped the link into the chat to the AWS for Nonprofits credit program, which does provide credits as well as the Imagine Grant. So though I would recommend looking at those two for funding. However, if you are a startup organization, Activate would be something that you could explore more. Okay, hey, one other question. Um, does AWS offer any support in selecting an appropriate tech stack for a mobile application? Yeah, again, so that falls under my day-to-day -day job. I meet with customers who tell me what type of application they're trying to build, whether that is a mobile application um, or a web application, a chatbot, contact center. Um, I meet with them and then I ask them for their requirements. What is their think big picture? What do they want to incorporate? And then together we find the right services uh, with AWS that can help you achieve that goal. And we do that together. So that's definitely something that we can do. So definitely fill out a contact us form um, so that you can meet with either me or my colleagues, um, a solutions architects to help you get started. Awesome. I think that's it for the questions, the Q and A. If you wanna provide them with a way to contact um, Angela. Yeah, absolutely. And the next slide, Angela and Kanata graciously shared their email addresses. Um, we're so thankful to all of you who have come to listen to these experts with respect and um, just kind of level up your knowledge about websites. We'd love to hear from you if you have topics you wanna to see covered on the next iterations of these website, these webinars. We want, we've done Gen AI last time, we're doing websites this time, and we want these to be useful to what's top of mind for you. So feel free to drop that in the chat. But we really think, thank you to Angela and Kunal. Thank you, Aretha, for bringing us here. And we hope everyone has a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks, everyone.